Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the New Gods Podcast, and today we have a very special episode with a very special guest. Please welcome Super Eye Patch Wolf. Hey guys, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So, uh... so did, okay, hang on. I have a question to start off with. Yeah, sure. Ooh. Um, did you guys think I was ignoring you at some point? What? No. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, well, not ignoring, but uh, um... a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The amount of fake internet beefs I have gotten into because people think I'm ignoring them, and I just don't see the messages, like, at all. Yeah, because oh, it was a, it was a few oh, days, and I was like, oh, because oh. I was asking questions, like, about PNGs and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, he's not responding. And then, and then I realized afterwards, I'm like, you've probably got, like, a, a million DMs just flooding in at every minute. So I'm like, oh, okay. So, that so that, is, that is pretty much it. It's like, when I, any social media app I have, I open it up, and it's, like, 40 messages. And I'm like, well, don't want to deal with this, and just close oh. it. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I literally just saw your messages just before we started there. Yeah, no, that's well. It's it, it's funny you mentioned that because that's exactly what the creator of Fear and Hunger goes through. That's what he doesn't use Discord anymore. Like he hasn't been online in like six months because he just gets oh, no. absolutely flooded with them, and it's really hard to get in contact with him now. Yeah, <laughs> I was talking to the um, the one that makes the soundtrack for Termina, and uh, he told me he wrote to Miro some some weeks ago for some soundtrack that has to be inserted into the game in the new update, and Miro mm. did not respond yet. Yeah, oh, Miro is well, okay. Yeah. So, I, okay, I guess th this kind of brings me on to, like, one of the reasons that, like, I was really curious to come on here. You, you're you all, like, hardcore Fear and Hunger fans, obviously. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, when when did your guys, like, interest in it kind of start? Um, a while right, ago. Who starts? I think. Okay, let's start with the start? raccoon. Let's yeah. start with your raccoon. Why? Let's go down Why the list. Me? Let's go down the list. What? Okay, Don't you want to start go. first, the raccoon? Yes. <laughs> Okay, okay, listen, all right. So, um, first of all, I watched this game called Fear Hunger 1 two years ago because of a friend of mine recommending it to me. And I didn't like it. I hated it because it had stuff that it was so, that it was like, you know what? This shouldn't be in a game. And I hated it. I hated that so much. So I ignored the game and I pushed it away. <laughs> well, two I years think, later. Uh... I think the appropriate reaction to first playing Fear and Hunger is fuck this game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's how it was. And I dropped it for two years. Fuck the game. I, I, I dropped it. And then two years later, I saw the Termina trailer and I was like, you know what? This trailer is actually selling me a lot. And I liked it. And I looked more information. I saw the mob. I saw like uh, a lot of stuff that was very interesting. Like I, I, you, you could play as a yellow mage, which was something like very, very interesting. That was, that was so mm -hmm. hype. And I oh, tried God. it. Yeah, I was hyped as fuck. I tried it, and I played Olivia, and I regretted my 50 hours <laughs> of gameplay because Olivia was a useless character for a new beginning player. Uh, I she, have was, she, was, she was my first run in Terminator as well. <laughs> oh, same? Uh, oh, and oh, un unfortunately, that entire LP is documented on YouTube, and <laughs> it is a top-to-bottom disaster. Just yes. a continuous series of poor decisions. Yeah. That was me the whole time. In 30 or 50 hours, I just could not finish the game and I could not do anything. And I couldn't kill anyone. And I, I was just bad. And out of nowhere, one time, I just played with Olivia and decided to just drop everything. I killed a certain character in the train and I got a headshot. And then I killed another one and then I got another headshot. And then I killed another one and then I got three headshots in a row. So and you basically I was became like, oh. like uh, addicted to gambling because of fear and hunger. Yes, and I was like, oh, this is how you get skills in the game. Oh, I didn't know this. And then I broke the game. I played as Karen instead of uh, Olivia. And then after a while, uh, finishing the game nine more times, eleven more times, I did my first challenge of fear and hunger, which was guns only Levi where I was only able to use guns as my only way of, of fighting, and ammo was the most important thing ever. And I did it with heroin withdrawal, my first attempt, let's say. And that is where the Levi.exe video comes out, where I took an entire week to make that one video full of memes and everything like that. And that video is what skyrocketed my channel. Oh, up that's to so, where I am that's right so now. good to hear. Fair play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I suffer a lot, and I took my revenge on the game. And he came out with this video. <laughs> That's mostly it. <laughs> That's pretty great. Mm -hmm. um, what about you, all bones? Ooh. Okay, so I used to have a policy where uh, if someone bought me a game on Steam or got me a code for it, 
I would stream it. Regardless of content. And <laughs> someone bought me this. <laughs> I guess. So wait, hang on. Was your first fear and hunger experience live on stream? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> and uh, I wandered north into the dungeon and ran into a prison guard. <laughs> and I was like, ha ha, stinger, let's chop that off. And he took one of my arms. And I'm like, ow, okay, well, I'm going to go for his head. And I missed. And he took off my other arm. And then he used Mad Rush and killed me. <laughs> and I realized at that point that this game had made it personal. <laughs> Yeah, I love, I love how you became involved into the game because you were like, you know what, uh, screw this, I'm not gonna give up on these stupid idiots. <laughs> it made me out. look like I was bad at video games on my <laughs> own stream and I needed revenge. <laughs> it did that to me as well, but I think that was my fault. I, think, so, I think that's just because I'm bad at video games. <laughs> nah. Now, Fear and Hunger, to be honest, requires a lot of uh, time to be understood. It's not uh, really a matter of uh, difficulty or something. Yeah. Uh, but people uh, usually like compare Fear and Hunger to a game that uh, is uh, like uh, uh, impossibly hard. But uh, mm. it's a little bit different if you think about it, because like uh, it's really all based around knowledge, around the time it's, you want to spend I, I, it. I totally, the way I have actually started thinking about Fear and Hunger, and I'm I'm much more knowledgeable on Fear and Hunger 1 than I am 2. Uh, 2, I've just finished my first playthrough and I, I really like it. But I really see Fear and Hunger 1 at this point. It's just a succession of knowledge checks, even down to very granular resource management. But it Ooh. is pretty much all, like, how do you use this resource best? So I, I would totally agree with that, Frappolo. It's, yeah, it's basically a puzzle game, which is mm -hmm. why I've been making guides for it. Because, like... Sure, I can beat the game forwards, backwards, blindfolded, yada yada, but that's not enough for my revenge. I want to open up the game's guts and let anyone absolutely crush the game effortlessly, and that's why I'm making guides for it. I think that's a, that's a cool mission statement, though, because <laughs> there is, like, it is when you first realize that, hang on, like, I can, I can break this thing. Like, that is such, such a, like, empowering feeling in a way that you wouldn't, like, you would never get from a game that was more built around being a power fantasy, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's, it's a great like feeling feel when you realize... Yeah, when you get good at it. Exactly. It's, well... it's a nice feeling when you realize, oh, well, this enemy, I can beat him this way, or I don't even have to fight him, I can just run away. <laughs> yeah. That's how you I beat guess, this enemy, you see going to dead. I guess what it is, uh, you know, I also do guides, and I'm also making them in Spanish right now with a different channel. Mm. Um, I think for me, though, it's about coming up with challenges that are near impossible to tr push myself forward, I guess, and do it even uh, harder than it is. Because I, I did Will Chiles Olivia with Rapolo in the Master Oh, Mode good old times. Yeah, and that was that, that felt really good to be able to finish Will Chiles Olivia. Oh, yeah, like, it, uh, it wow, I, 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 that... Yeah, that's crazy. Oh my god. Like yeah. as someone who just beat an Olivia run, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> on on Maso the mode too, where there's a timer the, uh, when you're outside. Yeah, there's a yeah. timer outside. What? Wow. Yeah, you uh ending A will will chill as Olivia. That's pretty crazy. Even for Apollo they didn't want to do it. I'm the only one person who did it. No, I'm still waiting I, for you know what? I just I just decided no 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 no. I just decided my, my story, my love story with Olivia had to stop there because uh, you know after spending <laughs> six hours farming with the pinecone pig uh, also yeah. uh, I am really interested actually actually. Uh Wolf, uh, have you ever crafted or used the pinecone pig? Never in one or two. Never used. No! He's, he's one of my. He's one of my people. It's hard he's to get one of my people. Fuck the pig. It's one of those things that's Fuck really the pig. Pig. I've got. I have gotten the pig a couple of times, and to me, I think there's some lore bits somewhere where it talks about. Maybe there's some Crowmaller lore that mentions the Pinecone Pig or something like that. But I always thought there was something you could do with Crowmaller and Pinecone Pig. Um, I, I could be confusing that with a different character, but I never that's, thought uh, to use... That's in the dating sim mode only. Um, yeah, in the dating oh, sim mode yeah, right. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, yes. Yeah. Wait, have you done well, Dungeon Knights? Oh, shit. Sure. Um, only like, uh, only a little bit. I kind of poked at it and I was like, well, this seems fucking weird. And then I never... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I will probably do it on stream sometime. It's a lot of fun. Sure. It seemed cool. Frappolo is the master of Pinecone Big. He farmed... 
pint of big for like six hours. I which love. I have no idea why. <laughs> pint of big, like a, I, I use the Ragnarvalder. I ban myself from using it. Like a Ragnarvalder, any great item only rotated completely around the pine cone pig. I spent uh, <laughs> I, I like two uh, five hour streams, I think. In those total ten hours, I think at least three or four were farming with the pine cone pig. Yeah, this is content. Yeah, this you, is the you content love we come your to pine see. Pig. I don't know why, to be honest. I don't like it. I ban myself from using it in the chat. But you know, a funny thing in the pine cone pig is also that while you farm with it, you have time to talk to the chat, to have a good time. After all, um, have you have you watched the, the guy that? To reach the level, I don't know, level 99 in uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 in the starting island, for example. Like, uh, that's the, the, the thing. He, it's not like he did it because it's impossible or something, but uh, he literally created a whole community around it. He was able to literally talk about the day of every the, the life of every day with the chat, talking about problems, etc. Like, uh, I think that's a very wholesome moment, and I really like the farming with the Pine Compig. So, to I actually had, had a, a similar experience that a while ago, and it was a No Mercy run for Undertale. Um, and basically, just going back and forth and killing all the monsters, I thought it'd be like really boring on stream, but it was actually like a really good opportunity to just like talk to chat and just be like, hey, everyone was good. And like, yeah, I, I found that exact thing. Right. Um, oh, Apollo, nice. when, did, when did you get into Fear and Hunger? Oh, so, uh, like, um, almost a year ago. No, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think a year ago, I, I, have, I discovered uh, these, uh, you know, this kind of interesting game called uh, Fear and Hunger. And uh, at the time I already had a YouTube channel, I already posted some videos uh, on a series like uh, Black Souls uh, or uh, other games, but like uh, the main point is uh, once I played Fear and Hunger, I, I was immediately caught because uh, I was searching online something like games like Berserk or uh, whatever mm -hmm. because uh, it was uh, my, my phase in which I wanted to play some RPG Maker games uh, or uh, something like that. And uh, once I started it, uh, I had a lot of difficulties. Uh, I started with uh, the, uh, like the um, Outlander was my first start, and I literally died in the first screen with the dogs. Hang on, sorry. So Did you literally I... just Google games like Berserk and then find Fear and Hunger? No, I think I, I Googled something like uh, RPG Maker, then I went into the list of RPG Maker games, uh, and I used the tags uh, to, to get like Dark... Uh, <laughs> That's uh, rad. Dark uh, <laughs> Souls like, uh, I think it was. I don't remember. There was, there was a slide like, with the list of RPG Maker that's games. That's so interesting, because like no one even like uh, recommended it to you. You just came across it like very naturally. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, uh, I, can't, I can't imagine discovering fear and hunger from like nothing like how, going in with no expectations <laughs> not knowing what it is that, that I mean, is so the fascinating that Fravolo played before we just tell you what kind of person he is right for Volo? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no it wouldn't because the games mm -hmm. that a person plays doesn't well, okay anyway, Raccoon, back listen. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna mm. hear the gap in his voice oh my god no, 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 right? in voice. <laughs> Please. Uh, okay. oh my okay uh, you know what i need to do another discussion uh wolf uh, Mm -hmm. No. Do you like pocket? No, no, hang on, hang no. on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Please, no. <laughs> this ain't my first podcast, Frappolo, okay? Yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. What were, you, what, what were you playing beforehand? <laughs> all right, I played a game. Uh, okay, Raccoon hates this game, but uh, I don't really have problems talking about it, but uh, it's just that I repeated it multiple times during the podcast. I played a game called Lona RPG, which is... Uh, a game with uh, very despicable teams, uh, with a lot of uh, very bad scenes, uh, very extreme also, like uh, there is literally, uh, how can I call it, uh, uh, violation of uh, several characters, uh, very explicit. I don't like those themes, but I enjoyed a lot the gameplay, like uh, at astronomical levels. It, it had a very well, like, dark like, themes. You know, I, 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 like, I am someone who watches a lot of like very fucked up horror in a way that I know, like, there's a lot of people who just wouldn't be into it, and I think that's cool, and it's like, I, I get that sometimes it's kind of cool to just experience something that is like, well, this is really fucked up, and I don't approve of any of this, but at the same time, there's, like, there's something to media like that as well, like, real kind of trash, Some, but yeah, I, I, I get it. Okay, thanks. Uh, because, you know, on the other side, uh, there is this dark raccoon in this podcast, which every time I mention Lone RPG goes like, uh, Frapolo, what are you saying? 
<laughs> so mean, anyways I... like uh, uh that's uh, one way in which i entered into fear and hunger and like uh, after starting i think i did the several rounds i think uh, i also have a uh, the blind run on my channel i think i reached the terror tour at one point i got dismembered and i stopped i stopped playing the game then uh, i found uh, another content creator of the game which at the time uh, uh, still had a youtube channel which was called uh, uh, Heartless Angel Katsueki, and I listened to Termina soundtrack uh, because I was like, uh, uh, I think, uh, um, yeah, it was the pre it was the current version. I think I don't think there were any, no, this, any updates. This was in the last. This was in the last couple of months, was it? Or as yeah, it was, was, uh, like, it was as uh, it, like one year this ago. Year. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, and so uh, I, I I listened to the soundtrack, uh, and I said, mm, you know what, now I want to continue. And so I started playing again, and uh, I realized that maybe what I was doing was wrong, because it's always easy to start and say that maybe the game uh, is uh, too unbalanced or something. But uh, I realized that maybe what I am doing is wrong. So I started uh, like thinking about plays, uh, exploring more, uh, and uh, we are here at this point, so I guess uh, it, uh, I got fascinated enough. Yeah, well, I think it, it, that's a really interesting point as well, because I think one of the reasons that Fear and Hunger took so long to blow up was because you do feel like it's broken when you play it first, because it <laughs> yeah. is so unfair. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Also, there is another thing. I think, I, I, I don't know how many people do this, but if you want to try Fear and Hunger playing the mod, the, 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 the demo, sorry, not the mod, the demo, the demo is severely outdated. So if you play that, it really is an RNG game. For example, do you know the Maneba, the tentacle monster mm -hmm. in the basement? Okay, in the demo it has seven tentacles, each one of which is able to attack. Then, the beds will not let you save, except for the Caramolar bed. That's the only bed in the game oh which you can save. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> so, okay, with the with the tentacle monsters, that means that if you don't hit their head, they get seven attacks? Um, it's a 50-50, but uh, you can bet you can get it at uh, up to seven attacks. And if you're playing as uh, someone like Enki, Enki cannot one-shot the Manebas whatsoever. Yeah, I, I've actually died against... Um the Manebas is Anki more times than I would like to admit. <laughs> yeah, I understand. The other really fun thing about the demo is that there's no Hexen or skill tree. Yeah, Any skills but... you get are entirely from the books. Wow. Wild. And also the RNG, only yeah. way to get Dash <laughs> is to play as Kahara and get lucky with a book of forgotten memories. I mean, no, wait, you can also get it by using an empty scroll and writing uh, All Lord uh, Teach Dash. I, I did do this. Yeah, I did, true. I did this during a video. And, uh, I mean, like, aside uh, from you know what's basically a debug item. Was, yeah. Um, and also like. Uh, what's the demo? Did that? After did that, have under, a different ending. Oh, sorry. Or was that before that? What? No, the uh, demo is only ending -y. Okay. Yeah. There is not even Mahaber. Like literally, if you go there, there is a dark corridor which just stops completely. And uh, under that video, the developer actually answered, uh, and uh, he said uh, originally his main plan. Uh, was to not have any save fo any save points in the game, literally. <laughs> and uh, the reason he nice. added the Cremoner <laughs> bed is because people complained about it. So he just decided, you know what, I'm gonna make this save spot so people can decide if they want to really kill this uh, creature, which by the way, in the demo there is no Iron Mask, there is no... No, you, you have to deal with the Cremoner by pure luck. So like, uh, and then after you that, of course... You uh, luck, you need hurting, because in the demo, hurting ignores evasion entirely. Yeah, but Kromoler still has like 500 HP in the demo, so like you have to do two hurtings, so you have to survive at least one turn. Yeah, but Peck, which is the only real threat in that, since I don't think blindness was implemented, uh, uh, will never target the main character, so you can just toss a hurting at his face and then toss a second hurting at his face after he pecks off your ghoul or whatever and he's done. It's not that bad. I mean, yeah, you can do that to get a save point in a demo of a game in which you can only get ending E. Did that really <laughs> work? <laughs> yeah, yeah what, what else work. am I going to use ghouls for? There's three of them. I, I as mean, you can see, <laughs> I, I, as you can see, uh, Frapolo and Jones really like Freehand 1, and Mao yeah. and I don't really have a clue about Freehand 1. I we love really? <laughs> Wait, so hang yeah. on. You guys, are, you guys are just like hardcore Fear and Hunger 2 fans. Yeah, um, only Mao and I. I've got about three times as many sure. hours in Fear and Hunger 2 as one. Um, I mean, I've still got like 60 yeah. hours in one, right? Um, but. I mean, that's yeah. still that's still a lot. I think <laughs> at this point, I have, have about. 
I think I have oh, sorry. over 101 and I'd say maybe 20 or 30 in um, in 2. The first time I played 2 was like part of like a giant charity stream. Oh, you guys donated to that, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, welcome, yeah. Matthew. That was a, a 16 hour session is an incredibly strange way to experience Fear and Hunger 2 for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's really... You know, I, I think when you play for the first time of Fear and Hunger, you just want to sometime to relax after starting playing. Like, a, yeah. you want, like, a, an hour to, like, sleep, yeah. think about what happened. Uh, like, 16 hours in a row is a little bit tough. It was, especially when mm -hmm. um, uh, I had, like, a punishment wheel. And at one point, when I, 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 one of the punishments was erase your save file. And so I had to start again. Uh, yeah, nice. <laughs> and, oh. I, and I think I got that at tw hour 12. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, what if you make multiple save files? No, this, this no, was, we, were, we were doing it legit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, how, what was your, like, uh, I guess, when did you start with Fear and Hunger? Um, well, actually, uh, Bones got me into it because we've been friends for a few years now. And um, um. He, he DMs me. It's like, hey, check out this weird game. And I look at it and I'm like, you know, this 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 looks gross, but it's a recommendation. Um, <laughs> I know his taste; it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, yeah, it wasn't wrong. Um, and I played I played the first game a few years ago, and I just got ending E, and I'm like, I think that's enough. I think that's enough of this game. Um, <laughs> it's just I mean, you're so not wrong. Funny. Yeah, it's it's so funny how you you like. Go, get all the way through it. It's just miserable. It's just a huge slog. And you finally get right down to the bottom. Oh, Lagarde's dead. Okay, just leave. And then you just get the worst possible ending where your character gets PTSD and you may not even physically have left the dungeon anyway. Now <laughs> it's like, good job. Yeah. Here's your sticker. So, I remember like the first time I made it to um, the ancient city and like just learning the scope of that place and realizing that I wasn't even close to done. And it was a real like, what the fuck is this game? Like, yeah. this is something completely beyond anything I thought it was. and It oh, was great. Dude, same. I remember yeah. exactly how that went for me, because I was on just, like, a completely doomed save file. Kaharo's down to, like, one arm. The Arth was down to, like, just her legs. The girl in Moonless had died. Hey, let's see what Show Love on this Ritual Circle does. And then suddenly I had a functioning character again, and I poked around a bit more with my functioning character. I'm like, wait, what the heck? Why is there a city here? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I remember... I, um... I... Oh, sorry, go on. No, no, no. I, I got to the tower where you fight Skin Granny with Moonless and two other more characters, and I kill her. But Moonless was, what, 1 HP? And everybody was, like, very low HP. And I was like, this is a sign. This is my ending. I'm going to sleep in this bed and it's, it's, that's it. And I figured out how to save infinitely. I was like, oh, shit. And I took that as my ending. That was my ending. Like, leaving that tower with Moonless. I don't care. I'm going to get food. That's how I live. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of appropriate, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 my, so that first trip to the ancient city ended with the skin granny for me. And it was real, <laughs> just like... Yeah. What like like because you know you go to the village and then you go to the forest and then skin grannies in the hut and it was like just this complete I like and then I was like okay is skin granny the last boss and because like I didn't want to look anything up about it because generally like if I'm really enjoying a game I kind of just want to figure it out you know mm. um, yeah and the like very gradual trip to you know um. What's the name of the last area in Fair and Hunger 1? Or the... The Void. The, void. the Gauntlet. Uh, not the Gauntlet. The void. Uh, the void. Yeah. Making it to there. And I remember, like, at the time, I was, like, I really... And I was playing it all on Terror and Starvation just because I, I genuinely liked the game design of Terror and Starvation better than regular. Um, Making it to the Void and, like, having, like, 10 HP <laughs> and then making it to Sylvian and, like... I like I was so annoyed because at that point I was making the video and I wanted to make like and then I finally beat Fear and Hunger and I wanted that to be the end of the video so bad and no. then Sylvian killed me in one hit and I like I was fucking furious like I was I was like this stupid fucking game I don't want to fucking do this hit. and then I realized that Sylvian killing me was like the perfect ending to that video yes it's like that is that's what Fear and Hunger is 
You got hit what? I remember that. Like, yeah. I laughed so hard at that because the yeah. thing that killed you was actually her weakest attack from one of the lesser tentacles. Yep. I like she literally just swatted me out of existence. It wasn't even like a strong attack. It wasn't even using I... her whole hand to swat a fly. She just did it with her pinky. Yeah, it was <laughs> devastating. I I feel like Fear Hunger is like dying away. It has a different ending to every single person. Some people take it further doing dumb shit like Trevor and I did. And some people just want to just, you know, yeah, one feel the, different. Because I felt different with it before. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to talk about this this episode was uh, like, what, what are your favorite moments throughout the games? But I was sort of thinking back and it's like every sort of room has a new cool moment. And... When you think about it, like, when you think about, like, looking at, like, a guide or something and see it just written down without actually experiencing it, it sounds like a made-up game. Like, none of it sounds really <laughs> it, real. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, oh, how to, to get the wizard, you need to you need to go and speak to these yellow mages who will blow your limbs off if you don't get close, and then you need to answer their riddles, and then you get a special item, and then you get this special item, and then you get a cube that's hidden in a village deep underground, and then you go back and talk to the wizard, and if you answer his riddles, then you can recruit him, and he can't die, but it just gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, since you mentioned uh, you didn't want to check online for information, so I think at the time in which you were recording the video, the wiki.gg, which is the new wiki of Fear and Hunger, still was uh, at the very start. So you there only was had access to There was, like, it was the only solid resources I could find were your videos, Frefalo. And, like, even then, I watched oh. the, I watched the, this was, like, right at the end of the video because I want, I felt like I had figured out the best way to beat the guards. And I was like, I wonder, is there a better way to do this? And then I watched your video and I was like, you can avoid coin flip attacks by yard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, I went through a lot See, that's why of, you gotta uh, play Termina first. That Termina tells you that at yeah. the start of the game. Yep. Straight I mean, up. I went through like a lot of uh, better views of the game. You just gotta listen to him. Does it actually tell views, you that in one? Uh, yeah, yeah she says uh, if you ever get a bad feeling, guard, it'll save your life. Bad and like, uh, yeah, so. it's uh, it's kind of a sort of uh, diegetic tutorial because they don't say blatantly if you guard, you dodge the coin flips. Also, it's not all the coin flips, unfortunately. There is one harvest man which is bugged, but apart from that, see, it's see, all the that's coin why flips. I prefer Free Hunger One. I mean, sorry, two, and I have five hundred hours in it. Yeah, uh, you said Free Hunger One. You said Free Hunger One. No, I said Free Hunger Three. No, 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 no. Um. Okay, I, I have a question for you guys. So. Fear and Hunger has like been around for a while and it sounds like you've all kind of been like, you know, like big fans of it for a while now. It has definitely, I guess, gone through a shift in the last year, right? Mm. Yeah. And like where a, a, like a lot more people are playing it and it started with them. Um, uh, I always forget the name of his channel, but he's a really nice guy. Um, Ultimate TV, I think. Ultimate he's the TV? guy who did the RPG that hates you video. Oh, uh, wait, yeah. you're talking about uh, Worm Girl? No, no, Worm Girl no, did no, one at the same girl. time, but then there was... The oh, wait, Risk the Cream? Risk Cream, maybe? Oh. Yeah, I think it was Risk Cream. No, his, name, his name's like Ultimate Ultman TV, Ultman TV. He drops my streams every now and then. But anyways, he, he did a video essay that has like, you know, I think by the time I made mine, it had like... At Sold least him? Maybe? It had, he, it had like at least a couple of hundred thousand views. And that was like the biggest... Thing I had seen or, or like I had seen of like oh there's there's people who know what this is um yes that's the one that's the one Zol Zoldman yeah, we don't know Zoldman. him I think um and so then like you know Sea Dog found out about it as well like did his streams and it's weird because like you know when I'm when I made the original video like I made the point that like barely anyone's fucking playing this like this game is virtually unknown mm. Uh, a couple of months later, I was selling at a con at an artist alley, and um, someone came up to the artist that I was selling next to and commissioned them for a fear and hunger commission. <laughs> and I like did a double take. I was like, "What?" <laughs> like, um, and now there's like fear and hunger fanzines. There's like I've seen cosplay. I've seen everything. And I guess like I'm curious as to you, to you, like. What has it been like watching the scene sort of change like that, you know? It's been great for our numbers, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just helped me a lot, to be honest. Good. It's, it's good. definitely changed a lot. Um, yeah, the community has just exploded. The Discord hasn't changed that much. Um, the official <laughs> Discord hasn't changed that much. But uh, the Twitter landscape is completely different than what it used to be. Just completely oh, different. I'll... 
Well, I mean, Twitter has gone through its own changes also. That's true, it has. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Like, after after your video came out, um, like, every every stream might have, like, three or four people come in saying, hey, I just I, I just watched a Super High Patch Wolf video, um, and I want to come watch some, watch some streams. It's like, hey, cool, come in. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was a weird one for me because, like, I was making that original video, like, I think I actually, I delayed another video, and I was like, cool, what's, like, a little video I can make? And I was like, you know what, that game Fear and Hunger is, like, super interesting, let's, let's, let, let's, let's put a couple of weeks and just put a video out. And I was really kind of shocked when it blew up like it did, um, and then, like, the just, like, it, it I am, like, I was... I am very obviously not the only person who was a part of making Fear and Hunger a bigger thing. Like, you know, it's all the people who are already making content. It was like, you know, it's it's Sea Dog. It's like a bunch of different stuff. Mm. I, I definitely not like the sole cause. But it was like, there was a part of me that's like, oh, fuck, I hope I didn't like ruin this small cool thing you know you know what i mean actually that was something I yeah to ask yeah you know, we, we, we keep the people we keep them in in check just in oh, case. we do yeah, yeah. <laughs> um that's what yeah. actually something i want to ask about was do you um do you think about what might happen to a community when you cover small stuff like this is that something that's on your radar um see when i make a video i am really just doing it for my own enjoyments and i actually don't like think about people watching it until right up to like um right up until the upload and then i get like fucking terrified then i'm like <laughs> oh god i i oh, shit people are gonna watch this this is this is bad um <laughs> but i'm like i have blown up stuff before but i guess like especially with like sea dog and stuff jumping on afterwards um I, ha I have never quite seen something blow up that big. And it was like, there's a weird level of like, should I have just let this be its cool little thing? Do you know, do you know what mm. I mean? It, it's it's yeah. weird. It's complicated. It's like, if it wasn't there's you, a weird responsibility. I think I think say that again. Someone else. That's what, yeah, yeah, that's like, I, 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 yeah. I, I totally agree with that because I think it was <sighs> already on like an upward tra trajectory. But like, on the other hand, I'm super glad that like, a lot of people get to find out about it but then like you know hearing about that like the the guy who makes these games has had to become a recluse that's like oh dude i'm sorry like, <laughs> fuck. it was found to happen but this really helps him though the thing about it that is um i started this like a year ago kind of like 11 months i think mm. and back then i didn't really know much about a video editing and stuff like that i kind of sort of just did my thing and one thing that I asked Mao at one point is like, oh, there's a sensor mode already. Should I make a sensor mode as well? Oh, there's a guy already. Should I make a guy as well? And Mao always came back to me and be like, if it's not going to be you who makes the video, then it's going to be someone else. And someone else is going to be stealing your spot. So you got to make your video. You got to make the sensor mode. You got to make your stuff. And he helped me out a lot on a lot of stuff. Thumbnail-wise, uh, decision-wise on video making and stuff like that. Mm. So... I think that, like, think about it as if it wasn't you, it could have been someone else that could have completely ruined this community for us. And I think we got to thank you for bringing people that believe in us now. Thanks to you. Yeah. Well, that, that's really incredibly sweet. I can also promise you there are definitely people who think I ruined the fear and hunger community. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, it's no, not just, just ruined get him. We'll yet. Get him. We'll get just... him, buddy. <laughs> Just wait a little longer. From what I understand, uh, the Hololive girls recently got permissions <laughs> yeah. to stream Fear and Hunger. Well, no. well, folks, good luck. <laughs> oh, no. it, can, it can only get worse, boys. Don't worry. We'll get there. We'll make it worse. <laughs> no, like, uh, going a little bit serious on this uh, topic, like, uh, I, I think, like, uh, I was uh, in the Fear and Hunger Discord at the time, uh, and there were people which were saying that, uh, so, oh my god, Super High Patrol made a video, the community is going to be destroyed, the community is going to go on shambles. Like, uh, after all this time, the community is still the nicest community I've ever seen, uh, honestly. So, like, I think... Uh, Either there was a uh, good uh, help from the mods to be able to immediately remove uh, all the possible toxic people that uh, entered into the Discord or something. I think uh, the community is perfectly fine and what you did was absolutely fantastic. Like, uh, nothing wrong came out of it. 
Okay, well, that's that's really good to hear, and I, I really appreciate you guys saying No, you know, that. actually, you did one I... wrong thing. You did one wrong thing. In hit your me. video, you mentioned how eyeglasses are able to make you hit heads <laughs> better. So, so, okay, I saw your video on eyeglasses, like, four days after the video went up, and I was like, <laughs> fucking god damn it. <laughs> I think Everyone I just had a makes so that I, mistake. I had Everyone. a run where I was just like, so I was, my <laughs> my legs were cut off, and I was on the ground just getting. I got like six headshots in a row or something, and I assumed it was because the eyeglasses. Mm. <laughs> Understandable, yep. you know. It's uh, like a, if that, in a yeah. game you see a thing that says uh, it boosts accuracy, you get six headshots in a row. That's understandable. So yeah. Yeah, so it hurts. But uh, we had a little <laughs> everyone... while ago. Everyone. Oh, sorry, you get points. Yeah, everyone who gets eyeglasses immediately starts going for headshots and realizes okay, that it's actually about a 50-50 to get headshots and is like, wow, these things are amazing. I'm hitting heads half the time because <laughs> most of the rest of the time when someone goes for the head, they're usually very desperate and attacking someone like Chromaller with their 85% evasion. So eyeglasses are an amazing hoodwink incredibly well done at trolling the player base Miro. It, it's a real uh the real power was in you the whole time <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> a, little, a little while ago we had the voice actor for needles come on come on the show uh louis morel and wow. he's been in the community basically since the start and he was talking about what the community was like even long before termina and he described it as there were five people in the community, three of them were Russians, and the other two got their voices in the game. Uh, <laughs> so like the, and the other one was Nicholas well. Sergal, which got the Sergal PR. Yeah. So you could you could get into the Discord and you could basically tell Mirror what you wanted in the game and then he would just add it. <laughs> Insane. Even up to Termina God. too. Like there was there's features that he added in that because people wanted like I think it was the ending ending B boss fight. There wasn't going to be a boss fight against... Well, I don't know if you've done it yet, so I won't say who, but... Um, but yeah, there's a boss fight that he added because people like, this ending sucks. Can you add an extra boss fight? And it's like, okay. So it just adds a whole extra boss fight. <laughs> See, there's like a simplicity to that that I really love. And it kind of... It makes me sad that like the community... Like it's kind of moved past that in a way as well. But like that, that's... I kind of had that with my own videos as well. Like I remember years ago when i would like recognize commenters and stuff like that and like chat to them and things but it's like once things hit a certain threshold you just you just can't really do it anymore you know yeah yep. you run into the cruel reality of dunbar's number yeah i did watch the video you made about the uh coaching from uh, influencer videos which tells you how to increase numbers etc at the end you have that uh, very emotional part in which uh, you say you become a big content creator and you're not part of the and you're not the underdog anymore like uh, that really touched me oh i don't want to you. be that to be honest i don't want to be a big content creator that's one thing i really always say i want to just meet a like, low kind of even i don't want to be big i really would dislike to have that connection broken with my community so you know it's a weird one because like i feel like it would be really hypocritical for me to say that like being you know the size i am hasn't brought me a huge amount of like benefits like like it's been really great in a lot of ways i've met a lot of really cool people and like you know financially it's been lucrative and all that kind of stuff but like there is also a lot that comes with it like just even just the crippling level of imposter syndrome is like so massive but the thing is like with most people imposter syndrome is like in your head but like you can find so many people who will be willing to just be like, yeah, you are terrible. And here's the <laughs> yeah. 20 paragraph blog post I wrote about it. Yeah. It's like, oh no. Um, so like, see, the trick to getting around that is just do what I do and decide that everyone you don't like is ontologically evil and that there is no action against them that is immoral. <laughs> that, yeah, it makes that, life so that, simple. I, 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 I like it because there, there's no way that could end up being a problem. No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, if it ends up being a problem, all it's, it's going to be a problem for is people who are ontologically evil. It's fine. It's self-solving. <laughs> That's fair. That's so I'm, fair. I'm just curious. How does that play into... Because you've got um, that series on your channel, which is things I like in a certain time frame. And they always yep. have lower numbers than your other videos. 
does that like play into that imposter syndrome or like how come how come you still i guess question is how can you still do those videos then if you know they're going to be like half the views of your your other other videos because i love making them well there you go <laughs> there you go nice and simple yeah mao like uh mao you literally like the the previous video you made was called meta horror which was not about fear and hunger because you liked talking about meta horror like uh, i think it's the same uh reasoning well yeah. um like with with any any video i make like there has to be a huge amount of enjoyment in the process of making the video otherwise i, I just i won't make it like there's 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 definitely videos i could make that would get a lot of attention and it wouldn't be hard like you know like um i could have back when i was like a big anime youtuber i could have made a video about how i don't think um like my hero academia is that good and that would have gotten huge views but it's like but fucking what was what would the point be like yeah, yeah like all i'd be doing is making a video about how i don't enjoy something that other people really genuinely do enjoy and like i have no investment i don't care this is this is a stupid video to make you yeah know? you I was, know like, what that's... i was going to release a video the same thing about this game that was releasing andy and Lele, whatever the fuck the coffee of andy just... and Lele. That shit, and I just I couldn't sit down and play it. I couldn't sit down and watch it. I don't like it. It's not for me. And I just decided to just delete the video and whatever. Yeah, like if I'm gonna make a negative video, it, it has to be something like I give a shit about, or something that like is kind of bad but in an amazing way, like Riverdale. Like yeah, <laughs> that show sucks, but that show's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, Actually, for Polo, it's funny you mentioned that that meta horror video because that was something else I, I I wanted to ask if the topic came up. Is um so most like you know most of my videos are, are fear and hunger related, but I I did something that was completely different uh, to try and start start branching out. Um, was it difficult for you to to stop like just focusing on anime and start doing the uh, the other topics? I wouldn't say it was difficult because I I just really wanted to, you know, but um. Definitely when I started making videos on other topics, I, I did notice that like they got less views and stuff. But I kind of like, okay, so here's what it is, right? The first time I ever made a video was on the anime like Hunter Hunter. Mm. And then the second time, I, the second video I started writing was on Killua from Hunter Hunter. And I stopped writing it and I was like, fuck, I think I need to like, if I, if I keep going this direction, eventually I'll be like the hunter hunter guy but there's loads <laughs> of stuff i want to talk about you know yeah um, now granted this was like a very different era of youtube where like specialization channels were much much rarer um, and now i think there's much more of a market for them but to me like i really loved making videos you know and it wasn't even just that i wanted to make different kinds of videos which i did but i also wanted to get better at making videos and so it started to become like a challenge like how do i make a video about professional wrestling and how do i make people who don't give a shit about professional wrestling care and i became like really obsessed with those ideas and like that's still kind of you know what drives me in a lot of cases like um finding like a really weird topic and being like can i make this work as a video essay and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't but to me like if you're not having a good time <laughs> making it what are you doing for me, but, you saw me in two videos that video. I will always say, oh. You still made a Fear and Hunger video, even though you, you only make videos when you're having a good time? <laughs> I, I'm also kind of a masochist, <laughs> so that should answer that question. <clears throat> I was going to say that you really did saw me on two videos. Gans being like the best video I've ever seen of Gans. Oh, thank you. Like, yeah, showing K and the other character who I forgot the name, Kato, I believe it is. Mm. How their lives are so different. That that part was like beautiful. Holy shit! I don't know how it's called the episode that you, you actually say in the in the video. Uh, candle something like there's a there's an Red episode in the manga. The, oh. That one, that one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Showing that K has people around him. I didn't see that when I when I watched when I read the manga. I didn't see that K had that people around them. I just sort of just thought that K was going to get a son at one point to be like Kato. I don't know. But I, I guess I didn't see that. It was just beautiful. Same with Paranoia Agent. I love that one as well. Oh man, that, that's two that's amazing videos. One. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, ones, I but they I were beautiful. That one, actually. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful video, to be honest. Those two. 
And now it's time for the most important questions of them all. Do you like Pocket Cat? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. So here's what it is, right? I don't yeah. approve of Pocket Cat's life decisions. Uh, those games are infinitely more interesting with him in it. Yeah. Right? He's a he's to bring it back to if any of you guys have seen Hunter Hunter, Hisoka is like my favorite character. Oh yeah. Hisoka yeah. sucks. Like what a morally reprehensible <laughs> asshole. But every scene with yeah. him is like, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? <laughs> and that's kind of how I feel about Pocket Cat. Like Same. the unease he brings to that game is terrific. And then um, the first Moon Scorched I ever fought was Pocket Cat. Ooh. Oh really? <laughs> I Is didn't it? know what was happening. I like I didn't know it was a moon scorch thing. It was just like, and now Pocket Cat is <laughs> here. Oh, did you go to the tower <laughs> and trigger yeah. that fight? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I remember seeing it. You know, I'm very happy you're saying you're saying this because Pocket Cat is my favorite character of Fear and Hunger. <laughs> I mean, he's kind, he's he's <clears throat> I know he's awful, but he's kind of great. But he's exactly sucks. like uh, I, I he's, prefer uh, Levi. I prefer Levi. Overwhelmingly charismatic and an incredible conversationalist. Mm. Yeah, like uh, yeah. it's bad, but it's bad made made well. Like uh, not not in the sense that I approve <laughs> what he does, but like. Uh, uh, the fact that he is bad, despicable, etc. And it works. Uh, that's the point yeah. for which I like it a lot. Bones is also correct. Like, when I was talking to him the last time, he made a point about internal and external art that I still think about. It's like when you talk to him in the mm. museum, I think. Yeah, mm. I think. And, and, he, and he, he has this whole spiel about how some people make art to, like, express things about external events. And then other people make art to express things that are like happening inside them. And he kind of talks about the positive and negatives of both approach. And it's like a genuinely really insightful little like thesis on the nature of creativity. It's awesome. It's great. Yeah, um, Pocket Cat is a bit But he's also a horrible mur He's also a horrible child murderer. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, kind of bounces out a bit. Yeah. Pocket <laughs> Cat's the kind of guy that you really want to go to the bar with and like have a great time with him. And then afterwards, you want to uh, turn one of those beer bottles into a shiv and let him have it. He's kind of like he kind of reminds me of like he kind of reminds me of like Bugs Bunny a little bit. I always Bugs think like I always think Bugs Bunny would be like really fun to like party with, but there'd probably be a point in the night where like he'd do too much cocaine and it would get really fucked up. Pocket cats like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Which arm? Mm. You, la arm or legs? Said yeah, he's telling you in the middle of the night. Arm or leg? Yeah. So, um, arms? <laughs> uh, he's a bit of a... You know, when you, I when was you thinking of whipping together an AI, like, voice acting mod for Fear and Hunger, and now I really want to use AI Bugs Bunny for Pocket Cat. <laughs> Why? So, I do a different podcast, Jeff Jeff's Bizarre Adventure, with um, a girl, Lucy James, and um, she was a guest on the stream when Pocket Cat first showed up in Fear and Hunger 2. Oh, no. You should find that clip of her. It is, she, she's like, she does like kind of some voice work as well. She absolutely fucking nails Pocket Cat's voice. It's like incredible. Mm. Oh, wow. Hmm. I'm gonna um, check for that later then. When you read his dialogue carefully, it's he explains a lot of what's happening throughout the whole games. Um because because the games are set up as like an overarching story. There's there's a plot that's gonna be told over three games, and we obviously don't know where it's going yet. Well what exactly the plot is, it's really hard to find what the threads are, but there is there are threads there, and Pocket Cat really um sort of explains a lot of them about about how stories because you know how there's, there's like a million references in the games, especially in in Termina. It's just, it's just super blatant. Um, Basically, what you're trying to say is that while Pocket Cat does strike up infer interesting conversational pieces, the conversational pieces themselves are a metaphor for the entirety of what's going on throughout the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when you like when you look at what he's saying compared to like the what Lagarde is doing and and what other characters are doing. Um, it's like, oh, he's just he's just straight up talking about them, like 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 copying stories, bringing stories to life, and 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 all the all this conversation about art. It's it's really interesting stuff, and a lot of people really sleep on it because they're like, oh, he talks for too long. How do I skip this? It's like, no, listen to what he's saying. It's really important. It's really yeah. important. 
I kind of get that it. Sorry, the boys, first ga- he also does that in the first game when he talks about you know children of light who draw strength from those around him. He's speaking about Lagarde when he's talking about children of darkness who draw strength from uh, the pain they've gone through and use that to create kindness. He's talking about the girl. Yeah, and when he says, "Do you?" and when he says, "Do you love me?" Who's he talking about? <laughs> Obviously, you, Frabola. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> no, that that makes sense. That make, actually, that makes sense. Yeah, I get that totally. Um, so so which video did you did you suffer the most while making? Was it was it Fear and Hunger or or was it one of your other videos? Oh, and Fear and Hunger was kind of a joy, honestly, to make. Like it was it was fun, and like I, I got to make a bunch of dumb <laughs> jokes with it, and I got to put in the little storyline where like my wife leaves me. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, How about but, the censoring? How did the censoring go? Curious. Okay, the, the censoring <laughs> was miserable. The censoring was like I'm not I'm not joking here. Two straight days of blurring out dicks, and then like, uh. and then, then I think it was like in the week of the video's release, someone's like, "Hey, it was um, oh, the first person to do a fear and hunger mod." Um, they, I think it was the first, but anyway, a censor patch came out like the week of the video's release, and I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 um, in terms of okay, I think the hardest videos are always the ones you really care about. And I think mm. I did a video called Why You Should Still Read Berserk, and that took like three months, I think it's like two hours long, and that was so difficult because. The process of making that video for me, I don't know if you, but I'm sure some of you are into Berserk, but the process of making that of video for me was like conveying everything I love about Berserk, but it also kind of became about like, like mourning, like kind of mourning the passing of Miura and accepting that like shit's never going to be the same. You know mm. what I mean? And that was like emotionally a lot to push through. And I'm really happy with that video now, but fuck, it took. I don't know how many rewrites to to get correct, you know. Mm. I'm I'm kind of praying that uh, uh, Fear and Hunger developer Miro doesn't doesn't die because there's so many questions that we just haven't been answered, and I don't think they ever will if he if he just doesn't finish the games. <laughs> I mean, how long do you think we're waiting for the next Fear and Hunger game? Probably. We've <laughs> been waiting time, a long right? time for the next patch. The patch has been like I, eight I months. I will wait. Yeah, four and a half years. Nine, eleven, I would say. Even. I think. So no, the call... first release of Fear Hunger 1 was uh, 2018. Then uh, Termina dropped in what? Early? No, late? No. Right around December 22. Yeah. No so we we're looking at about four the... years between games. I can't there is, wait um... to be back on this podcast in 2027. Yeah. yeah. There is a <laughs> we're scheduling it now. Like, yeah. <laughs> There, there is a little problem, uh, Bones. Uh, if you think about it, uh, Termina was able to came out, uh, quote-unquote, early, because uh, the majority of events was already set up from the previous game. But I don't know if Mirror will stay on RPG Maker MV for Fear and Hunger 3. So there is the possibility he has to redo all the spaghetti code another time from scratch. Oh, that's right. I, don't, don't, I, wonder, I wonder would he hire other people and no, make it like he refuses. a bigger thing? No, he works alone. He yeah. works alone. It's, it's, He's had is, several uh, uh, very talented people offer to work for him for free. And he's like, no... He says that's not gonna happen. Works. I can't work with people. Yeah, yeah. I, I made a, a bug fix mod that fixes <laughs> a lot of bugs of Fear and Hunger 1, and I told him, uh, Yo, Miro, I made a, a bug fix mod. Do you want to put this in the game? I don't want uh, recognition or anything. Do you want it? And uh, apparently, he doesn't want it, so I guess. Do you know, bugs I, 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 I kind of get that as well, a little, like a little bit, because like I still do like everything in my videos, like every tiny little thing. And I just spent two full days scanning a book. <laughs> just being like, I don't think this is a great use of my time, but I'm just going to sit here and do this. <laughs> <laughs> so so you didn't have an editor or anything like that. It's all entirely, entirely you. Yeah. Wow. I love it. I love editing. Um, I kind of makes me cold the idea of someone else editing my videos. I actually did have a friend edit a favorite things video about five years ago. And like, I got the video back. I watched it and he did a good job and I paid him. And then I deleted it all and just started again. <laughs> I, I kind of get it. <laughs> like, um, mm. it's it's really it's really sort of artistic, like how how you lay it all out and and how you can be so precise with the emotions you want to invoke in every every single frame. 
And um, yeah, they always sort of say that, you know, because I come from a streaming background, they're like, you know, you got to hire editors for clips, but you want to you want to do it yourself for a while so you develop your own style. And now I've done that. I'm like, I I kind of don't want to edit. I don't want. I kind of don't want to um, hire somebody to edit my my main videos. Maybe maybe like clips and stuff in the future. But it's like I I like doing this. It's fun. Like, <laughs> well, it's interesting because like I know a lot of people hate editing. Like it's a really? real kind of barrier for a lot of video essays. That's but, me. Um, Hello. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I I get it because I think it's just you either like it or you don't. Like there's no coming around to it. But I've always just been kind of fascinated by it. Like I mm. think the the way you can change the tone of a video with a slightly different piece and with a slightly different clip and a different piece of music. Mm. Like when I drop a piece of music onto onto uh you know section and it just it just works. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> like it, oh it makes me so happy. Yeah, yeah. My my old videos used to just be, and I mean, I say old. It was like only a couple of months ago. Was um just sort of like big info dumps, just just put out as much information and get just throwing clips from the game, get it whatever music, and I sort of look back at it and people are like, yeah, it's good. I'm like, it's not though. I can see why people would hate doing this. Um, and now I've started so that's, to really. That, that... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah, and I started to really start of. Um, have you seen the YouTuber Nexpo? Nexpo. I'm not sure I have. He he covers a lot of like horror, horror topics, um, and he really pushes editing. It's it's not just you know info dump about whatever he's, he's talking about. He's um all he lets all of his scenes really breathe. He's got all these really interesting shots, and I was like, um, I was like, man, I want to be, I want to, I want to do that. I want to make every single frame interesting. I want people to like actually not just throw it on in the on the side while they're playing a game i want people to sit there and actually watch my video and so i have to make videos that are worth watching uh, oh so i actually um i actually watched this guy's videos for the first time in the last i'd say two weeks i watched his like three hour pet scop video Ooh, i love pet scop good game good yeah <clears throat> oh i've seen that video i think that's the only video i've seen <laughs> of that guy yeah, he's he's got some really but, big ones. But you're right. He 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 has a way of making videos that is very kind of beautiful. Like it's really atmospheric. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and obviously, I don't just want to copy him, right? But um, yeah, I, I just love that love that idea of of making videos that you sort of can't look away from, even when it's even when technically nothing is happening for like thirty second span, which is like insane for youtube how can nothing happen for like 30 seconds but you, you can't look away and i think that's real mm -hmm. skill there yeah for sure well like that's that's also like i think video essays are just this thing you can get infinitely better at like there's no skill cap to it and the only like genuinely the only reason i still do this is because i i love the challenge of trying to get better and that's not me saying my videos are good just that whatever they are I like to try and improve them. Like the only person I'm trying to be or do better than than I make a video is like myself from last year. You know, it's like, what yeah. can I do that mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to do then? And that genuinely gets me up in the morning, that thought. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great drive, isn't it? Was mm -hmm. it, did you find it was difficult to uh, distill fear and hunger the whole, you know, all your playthroughs down into like a, how long was your video? Like 20 minutes? For T maybe, I think. 50 minutes? 50 minutes? Oh, sorry. <laughs> a completely different number. Yeah, it's um, okay. I just watched it last night. It would again. be worse if you were like, that video was like three hours or something, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's 13 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, if you think it's 20 um, minutes, it meant that he was so in a rapture that he totally lost sense of the progression of time. Yeah, there I mean, you that's go. The, that's the compliment I, I took from it. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it was as hard as anything else, you know? Like, your thoughts on something... So, like, the way I make videos is always, like, I will write the script, and scripts, like... People always come to me and they say, hey, I wrote my first draft of my script, and it's it's really bad. And my response is always, like, you mean a first draft? Because they're all terrible. And then I, I <laughs> throw out the first draft then, because I know that's not what I want to do. And so I rewrite it, and I'd say I do about four drafts after that and then i record the audio and then i edit it and then i watch the video back and that's terrible <laughs> but at that point i think i know what i'm trying to do and so i take that bad version of the video and try and fix it and make it better and it's hard and it's heartbreaking because you always think you have it and then you watch it back and it sucks mm. and then you try and make it better and um so fear and hunger was difficult to distill down 
but I, I love that process. You know, I love taking something that isn't working and trying to make it work. And just the challenge of like, okay, I know a lot of people who watch this don't aren't going to know anything about Fear and Hunger. How do I... How do I pull them in and convince them that, like, this is worthwhile and you should play this? That mm. part must have been tough because the games are just so complex. Even from the very beginning, they're super complex. Yeah, like, hey, to be honest, I... even, even people that actually play here in Hunger don't know a lot of the mechanics, even now. Like, uh, it requires <laughs> a lot of time, as I said uh, even before. Yeah, and it's not really the complexity that grabs people. The complexity is the thing that keeps you hooked after you've already started. The thing that grabs you is the fact that there's this, you know, seven foot tall deformed monster charging you at with his stinger out. So I, I, I totally agree with Jones. Yeah. Like, it's the emotional parts of those games that grab you, like the fear, the panic, the like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? All that kind of stuff. And so as opposed to like what I didn't want that video to be would be was like a very intricate breakdown of the mechanics. And that is absolutely not what that video is but what i did want it to be yeah. was like listen this this game will make you feel like this if you give it enough of a shot and that's what i kind of wanted to concentrate on mm. yeah i <laughs> i do love that moment when you, you you play the game for the first time and you see the guard and you're like my my, my mind i was like I, I didn't think games were allowed to do this like who let who let him do this and then <laughs> around every single corner there's a new thing that made me think that it's like, what? You can do this yep. in video games? What? Yep. What is this? And it doesn't stop until the very end. It just doesn't yeah. stop. And I couldn't believe that. Yeah. Straight up. So, in my original the... edit of the video, I had like a... I, ha I have like me encountering the guard. And then I, I, I do a section that I call the dick party. Where I just do like huh? a montage of all the dicks in the game, uh, censored, but still. Oh, like... Okay, okay, okay. Why did you delete it? Sir? Why did you delete it? Uh, I, I YouTube demonetized the video. I, I can, oh. I can. I, oh, I will link you guys the original. I also talk about like the Sylvian orgy as well. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah. You still have the original. Though? Oh yeah, I yeah, want to see you guys. It. I want to see it. Oh, I would love to see it. You know, it's very funny because uh, Mouth Dog does uh, streams, uh, videos, etc., without censoring anything, and I think it doesn't get like, demonetized. So it's very funny that YouTube demonetized you for the dick party. So what that will be is that like viewers will, if enough people see your video, and if enough people hit this is inappropriate, YouTube will look into it. So oh, that yeah. Fear and Hunger video got, I think, 300,000 views in the first 24 hours. So even if 0.01% yeah. of people uh, hit so that's inappropriate... Very weird. Yep. Because mm. I, I, I asked YouTube itself if it was okay or not to do that because I streamed Termina without censor. Even though I, made I, a censor I think it's a situation it. of uh, it's okay, but if know. a lot of people report it, uh, then it's not okay. Yeah, yeah, or I get you, right? On, on every platform, it's, it's a different itself. game for if you're a small if you're a small uh, user compared to a big one. It always is on every platform. There's you know, nothing you can do about that. The yeah, actual maybe. rule is whether or not it upsets whatever... Uh, Oh man, I don't think I can say my actual opinion on YouTube stuff without getting censored off YouTube. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a matter of whatever they feel like at the time, ultimately. Yeah, but there's no actual. Is. And it, it's, it's, it's not even just how they feel. It's like they could. There could be entirely different people operating off entirely different rules in six months' time. Like if I've learned anything about YouTube, is that it's completely inconsistent, and you can never rely on it to stay the same or be have any level of like cohesion across periods mm. see that's exactly what i mean you roll the dog you get someone that person might think it's great but if it landed on someone else's test it might have been nope we're instantly banning you off youtube yep and like you yeah. never know what's gonna like trip its algorithms or any of that stuff yeah you gotta, you gotta be careful with it hey I should probably send some more. <laughs> yeah speaking of uh video so this is a question which I don't think like if you don't answer it's all good, right? Go but are you are you going to do a video on Termina? I have to. Point? It was a stretch goal in my charity stream. Oh, good! Oh, you forced it. Oh. Excellent. Uh -huh. And you gonna um, use so, which sensor mode? I'm curious. Say that again. Are you gonna use my sensor mode? <laughs> um, I hadn't thought about it, but probably if that's mm -hmm. cool with you. Yeah, of course, of course, you're allowed. 
There is yeah, unfortunately awesome. no raccoon. You have to charge your royalties for it. You fool! I have to charge him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Royalties. Thirty percent. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, I I need to charge you like uh, okay, five dollars. I'm, I'm probably gonna. Oh five. Sure. That's fine. <laughs> five dollars. Yeah. That's what YouTube pays me. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. The way I put it to my audience is that. Get ready for this Fear and Hunger 2 video coming at some point in the next six months to four years. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like four years yeah. just in time for Fear and Hunger 3. Like yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. definitely not enough for Fear and Hunger 3. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, Termina has a lot less stingers in it. Um, I know. It's so tragic. It's very disappointing. It feels like they sanded off all of the rough edges. <laughs> hmm. Nah, I don't really I mean, care that about game. The still has stingers. a lot of rough edges. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's funny. Like I always, always say, you know, I always tell people that they should play Termina first because it's a lot more, it's a lot friendlier, it's a lot, it's a lot less dark and and edgy and um and brutal and and even mechanically, it's a lot easier to play than the first one. But then they're like, man, this game's still gross, and I'm like, oh yeah, it it kind of is still, even <laughs> for like people who aren't used to Fear and Hunger, it's still pretty dark. It's a really dark game. I also think, like, the way it's... The horror of Termina is so different from the horror of Fear and Hunger 1. Like, I think Fear and Hunger 1 is a way more oppressive feeling. But in Fear and Hunger 2, like, there's so... Like, it's much more open, and I think you can approach Absolutely. things differently. And I think also, like... Now, this could be because there is no terror and starvation mode yet in, in Termina, but like on, on this base difficulty, you can the enemies are so much weaker. Yeah. Oh absolutely. my god. Mm -hmm. I yeah. died like four times on my whole first playthrough of Termina. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I think I think. Like on my first playthrough I had the uh, I had the Levi withdraw well, uh, so I wasn't able to have uh, the enemies uh, I was able to act first in battles. And I still had uh, an easier time than Fear and Hunger 1. Yeah. Yeah, Fear and Hunger 1 for me was the process of like dying and just inching forward every new room, every new zone. And I loved it. And like, like I, I personally prefer Fear and Hunger 1 to 2, but I also feel like with 2, it's still very much a work in progress, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, the dev straight up admitted that, like, you know, he's got a lot more stuff he wants to add still, so. Mm -hmm. There's some skills and that don't yeah, work. I, that I totally agree with that. you on that one. That's exactly why I prefer one. Like, I didn't make it to that first bed where I could make a save point until, like, my second stream of it. It that... requires uh, a lot of dedication uh, in it. Yeah, it yeah. There's actually a lot of stuff made that... me try, and I loved that. And in Termina, <laughs> I picked Marco and got a Bella at the start. And I'm like, oh, well, guess I'm never dying again. Oh, yeah. except for that one landmine, I guess. <laughs> it took me a lot for me to get a Bella. A lot. I don't know why. But I do feel like it is kind of like early access in a way. But I support Termina more over the first game because of how many skills there are. I'm guessing. Skills are pretty nice. How many so skills there are, but uh, like half of it yeah, yeah. is either an insta kill for you, you or, and one or of them uh, like, a stat boost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of them was like, oh, Levi has a skill that has, uh, that has a shotgun. Wait, what? I forgot about that, says Miro, openly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. what? Levi's skill, the ability to kill someone if you shoot them enough times with a shotgun. <laughs> Which, that, that definitely yeah. takes a skill to happen. You can't just, like, <laughs> aim a shotgun at someone and, and shoot it. No, no, no. Yeah, it was like, oh, wait, I forgot about the skill. Sorry. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you're right about the, the horror being different, um, eye patch, And I think it's it sort of comes through in a lot of the design decisions as well. I mean, like, the whole thing is, it's sort of like, it's, supported, it's supposed to be a reverse of the first game, where you go deeper in the first game and deeper into the, the darkness and it gets tighter and tighter. And in Termina, you're going up into the city eventually to, like, a, a literal tower at the very end, right? Um, mm. And... You know, you're instead of being in the in the darkness, you're in the light. It's it's the moonlight, but you know, it's the same thing. And I, I guess the idea is that the horror can can come from any direction. Like you've got a lot more enemies that um, can just appear. Like you got needles, the uh, the death masks, the mob, and and some other ones. And oh, there's gonna be more added to. Mob. <laughs> the mob. Oh, is I, so I'm good. so glad to hear that. I, I also I really like my personal design wish for Fear and Hunger Two moving forward. I really want needles to be more of a threat. Absolutely. Ooh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 The first time I ran into needles, I just beat him. 
Yeah, same. And I was like, wait, this guy was supposed to be like a crowballer? He spawns in multiple places? Whoa, I've never seen that. I just always killed him because he's so easy. No, actually, yeah. uh, he's not super... I, I did read a little bit of a Twitter post from the developer. Uh, he replied to someone where he said uh, that comparing needles to the Caramoller is not fair because it's not supposed to be like the Caramoller. It's supposed to be an I, enemy that chases you, but not like the Caramoller. Yeah. You know what? I actually... I really respect that. Like, I personally, I would prefer if, if it had a little more of the panic of the Caramoller. But I do think it's really cool that he's like, listen, I'm not trying to do the Caramoller again. Mm. Actually... I have a little uh, news for you, Wolf. Like, uh, uh, there is an enemy you never found in the game, which <laughs> yeah. is uh, kind of remnant of the Caramoller. And in the new update, uh, there is going to be a new zone, which is kind of related to this enemy. Because this enemy is only a Mazo exclusive enemy. But uh, there is a new zone which has the freaking this enemy. What, so what is the enemy page. called? It's called the Gull Bros. It's two <laughs> Gulls. <laughs> It's, it's G A L, uh, G U L L, G U L L. It's not about basically bird. crow mauler, but seagull instead of crow. And, also two, and there's two of them. Yeah. Okay, but I saw a picture of this enemy, and I thought it was a meme. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the meme is when Goku shows up. That is. It, oh yeah, okay. that makes sense. You know, this yeah, is, we got going actually... because um, I'm, I, I wanted to do a t-shirt for my streams. Um, on streams, I, I sometimes go by the final gamer, and I wanted to have like a bunch of legally distinct characters for my streams on the t-shirt. And I was going to do uh, the pigeon mauler. Glad that <laughs> you guys showed me this. Kind of these sides and some punch, potentially huh? legal issues there. <laughs> the pigeon mauler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder yeah. if you can still find the uh, Goku. Oh yeah, um, there was a. Uh, I think uh, I, we still have the image of Goku in one of the endings. I don't know if uh, Wolf wants to see it though because it's uh, kind of a spoiler. Oh yeah, uh, I don't mind. Spoiler. Goku is a spoiler. Go yeah, I mean, it's a spoiler. Yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all know by now that Fear and Hunger is canon to Homestuck. Mm, yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, iPatch, when is the Homestuck video coming out? By the way. You know, every year, I'm like, should I read Homestuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, I'm always should. like, like, part of me is actually, like, I, I, I have no experience with Homestuck at all. You know, all I know is like that a lot of the Undertale fans came from, uh, the original Undertale fandom came from like mm. the Homestuck fandom. And I have seen a lot of cool fan art, which I love. Part of me thinks that, like, getting into Homestuck in, like, 2023 would be an absolutely insane thing to do. Yeah. And that kind of yeah. makes me want to do it. But then there's another part of me that's like, well, what if I just, like, get into it and I don't like it? I think you can you can find out if you like it or not pretty quickly. Um, mm. Like, oh, it does no, make I a lot of changes, changes. <laughs> but the core you're, you're, idea, you're, you're, like, you're... the core feeling of, the, of it, I think you can get pretty quickly. I reckon. I think, I think I gotta give it a shot, like a real proper shot. <laughs> Listen to me, okay? Okay. <laughs> Very important. It took me six thousand pages for me to get into Homestuck. I hated the show the whole time until page six thousand. Oh me. no! If I hate something, I will drop it in like twenty pages. Yeah. Uh, so why did you push? Why, but why did you? Why did you keep going? <laughs> so, there's something with me when it comes to not understanding something that someone likes so much because Homestuck, Omori, Undertale. I was like, man, I want to see what the deal is. I don't know why people like it. I hate that this can be liked, and I hate that I don't like it. Same with Fear and Hunger. I tried Omori. Mao was there when I was playing it. I finished <laughs> it. I finished the whole thing, and I said to Mao in the face, I hate Omori because I finished it. <laughs> yes. Wow. And okay. I wanted to be the same with Homestuck. I read the whole thing and be like, okay, to my friends that like Homestuck, I read Homestuck. I hate it. But I ended up saying, fuck, I love Homestuck. I have a troll sauna now. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Like, it took me 6,000 pages for me to be like, oh, shit, I get the appeal. No, I cannot... Stop reading now. And they read it five times in a row afterwards. 
it's 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 an interesting one because like i remember like when i first like came across undertale and it was like i would say maybe it was not long after it first released and it really only had that tiny fandom and so like i was going into it having no concept that it would become it's like it's like the it's like the evangelion problem right it's mm. like if you watch evangelion for the first time now it's really hard not to kind of be having a reaction to a reaction to a reaction of a show you know because like people say it's the greatest thing of all time people say it's fucking trash people say it like you know it's this incredible deconstruction people say it's like it's all like people say it's not a deconstruction it's like all these different things when i first watched evangelion it was because i stumbled across it at like 3 a.m on the sci-fi channel and i had no concept of what it was mm. and discovering it that way was so fucking amazing and i guess i'm aware with something like homestuck i am coming at it very much from the other end where there's all these people who are like this is awesome and this is terrible yeah i feel you on that one because i have had almost literally the exact same experience with evangelion except i only caught the last two episodes awesome i love out of context anime <laughs> So I just had like this out of context, like absolute nonsense slideshow. And I'm like, uh, okay. I feel like if I ever learn more about this series, I'll ruin it for myself. Mm. <laughs> mm. Interesting. Of getting out of context anime scares me a lot. Like I'm one of the, one of those people that likes to like uh, follow the whole story. If there are prequels, I'm going to start even from the prequels, like uh, starting from a random episode. Uh, <laughs> but that's what, that's what you usually do when it comes to TV, right? Yeah. I don't watch TV. I literally don't watch TV. I, I I don't even have a TV in my room. The TV I use uh, I use it as a screen for the computer. Huh. So when I was younger, I don't do it anymore. Uh, but I used to, if I heard an anime was good, I'd put on like episode seven and watch that. Hmm. Really? Because mm. I always felt like the first episode's always a lie, and I was like, if I'm really going to enjoy this, I'll just be able to pick up on the vibe and enjoy it that way. <laughs> Uh, I can't say to this day whether that was a good approach or not, but I actually found some stuff I really liked through it. There was that old rule. I don't well, know if it's still holds. Seven episodes is pretty good. <laughs> hey, see? See? Seven episodes. Hey, episode please, seven yeah. is shit gets real. Yeah, th <laughs> yeah, there was that old rule where it was like, you have to give an, uh, an anime at least three episodes to see how good it actually is. So I guess that's the same thing, really. Just skip them. Just yeah. don't even give them the three episodes. Just go, okay, I'll just start later then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, also we sent Goku in the chat. <laughs> so wait, was this in Fear and Hunger? This was in the <laughs> fandom uh, This was in the fandom wiki once there was uh, a little attack to the wiki in which yeah, all of the images were, were changed. At one point, no, even... No, this was uh, before that. This yeah. has been up there for no, like... No, no. This was, I was, yeah. at this point. Yeah, this was on, there. was on there for ages, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I can <laughs> change So there was, there's, there's been two wikis for a while now. One of them's really good. One of them's actually excellent. Um... But the other one was just an absolute nightmare of misinformation for the longest. I think it still is. It's just just wrong. It's, oh god, everywhere. it's so it bad. And it was attacked <laughs> at one point, and then people started changing everything on it, and uh, it got it got pretty bad pretty quick. Oh no! Oh, so Wolf, you were in the you were in the wiki as well. I think you were in on the Dan page. Okay, yeah. Someone told about this. What was that about? Uh, you basically, just... you were done, and I was stalking you, and I was pocket cut, I think. Oh, that's fucking great. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> there is a video on Mouth.channel Mouth Mouth where he goes uh, through some of the changes. I think there is even this one of uh, you, Wolf. That's oh, really funny, Jesus. Yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it was hilarious. Um, now, <laughs> there is a question I have to ask, and Raccoon is going gonna, is gonna to hate this, but what do you think of the lore? Mm -hmm. of the fear and hunger games oh. so far oh i think it's ah. awesome um i <laughs> like i don't engage with it as much as a lot of people but i i like i have come to really really like it and more so when i started getting into termina like um with fear and hunger one i think there is like a lot there is like a lot of lore but it feels much more pushed into the backgrounds and then when i started playing termina and like the moment you see, um, without getting into any spoilery stuff later on in the game, but the moment you know you come across that scene and you see 
the big character from Fear and Hunger 1 just walking up the center of the street. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> screamed. I was like, yeah. It's like, he's the Kaiser? What? No way. Yep, it was brilliant. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I like it. Like, it's... What I love about Fear and Hunger is, like, the horror and the mechanics and the lore does come kind of third to those two things. But at the same time, I think, like, there's an incredible amount to dig into. And I think there is, like, some genuinely... Like, we're, like we were saying with the Pocket Cat conversation earlier, like, some genuinely really profound and interesting stuff in there. Like, mm. the, the, the... What's the name of the guy who makes this again? Miro. Uh, Miro. Miro. Well, happy like, babies. that dude's a fucking genius. Like, oh, good yeah. God. Yeah, he... He comes Sorry, across as a goofy dude on Twitter, but when you're playing the games, it's like, did one person really make this? Like, this and does some... he do all the art? Yes, mm -hmm. I that think is he's like one percent is... of the. I think he he has some designs from like um, other people have given him designs, but I think he does all the art, um, most of the music. There's like three or four tracks that he didn't do. Um, all the coding except like plugins that he's that he's used um, God, so. I, I hope that dude's okay i hope he like gets enough rest and like <laughs> is is doing all right because that is a inhuman amount of work yeah it is it it makes like it, it's easy to understand why why an update takes eight months when he's got to do all this crazy stuff right this is so of course much. yeah um, Especially with the way he set up the code and how much of a nightmare <laughs> it is to fix anything in it. <laughs> also, I don't know if you know about what happened like a couple of months ago. He was uh, almost to the, on the point of releasing the update, but uh, his PC got completely destroyed, so I he had to restart. That. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Apparently, like whatever he made for that update, that's just never getting a remade. He decided that he's just gonna leave it and do other stuff. Well, he didn't say he didn't say it's never going to get remade. He said he doesn't want to work on it straight away, so it's not going to be in the next. Imagine, update. Uh, imagine if in the update he, he was working on like a uh, playable Tanaka or playable Pav. Uh, we're going to have to wait a lot. <laughs> oh God, I hope it's not playable Pav. It is. I want that so bad. I need Pav. I need Tanaka. Straight up Tanaka. First of all, I need my item only run. I need my, I need my briefcase only run. I need my <laughs> Tanaka. I need him. Need him. Who's your who's your favorite uh, contestant so far, Ipatch? It's hard for me not to like Marco just because the first time I played Marco, I looked myself into a really good build and it was actually really cathartic being able to like take down a lot of the tougher enemies just with <laughs> Marco. But I think over the course of my Olivia run, which was like so disastrous and so many awful things happened there. I've really, like, developed, like, a fondness for her, and, like, um, you know, we kind of, like, started getting, like, little little lore for Olivia on the streams. Like, one thing we were, like, L Olivia is so jacked because she just grabs the ladder and, like, <laughs> pulls herself up, you know? <laughs> um, but I just think her design's really cute, and she's, her playing as her is really interesting, and, like, the wheelchair stuff I think is so cool because like how many games can you actually play as someone in a wheelchair and how many games like make it an interesting mechanic that you yeah. have to think about. Yeah, it's not know? just yeah, tacked absolutely. on. It's like, you know, you have yeah, to be aware. No, you, can't just, um, you can't wheel around an ancient city and expect there to be wheelchair ramps everywhere. This city is like 2,000 years old. There's not. There's stairs. Got to deal with it. Um, and like, like some, some, of the, oh, some of the wildest moments were like um, hitting hitting the chair toggle at the wrong time and <laughs> sliding back into an enemy <laughs> yeah. I, I died so many times on masso mode because i uh, didn't get the, the chair timing right and wheeled all the way back down it's like oh now you get killed by the moon good job <laughs> so uh i wanted to say something <clears throat> the there is like i think it's mostly like a spoiler kind in a way but i think you need to know this if you play olivia Sure. Going down stairs, you can actually hit enemies with it. You know. This so way. I figured that out late into my playthrough. Okay. And, and that then is so cool. when they are stunned, you can shotgun them to instantly kill them. Nice. Really or you can enter into the battle for an ambush, uh, if I remember yes, correctly. Yes, we need high ability for that one. Um, I also but think yeah. Livia just looks like really sick, like, like rolling along with like a gun, <laughs> like she just looks <laughs> so <far. laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. She loves guns too. It's funny the dialogue that pops up when she's like, "Guess guns." She's like, "Ooh, I'm strong now. Let's go." <laughs> are there any characters that are like, "I hate guns"? Uh, yeah, Osa. Yes. 
No, no, there's characters that yeah, say yeah, they don't like using them. Um, who was it? Uh, I think Dan. I no, Levi. Levi's like, you know, you swore you'd never use a gun again, but you sort of have to now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, all of them but Osa have unique dialogue. I mean, Osa can't even use guns, so, you know. Um, one of the moments that really stood out to me in Termina, where, like, it really... It's like we were talking about those crazy moments in Fear and Hunger 1 from earlier, but one of the one of them in Termina that really made me feel like that was um, discovering that there are doppelgangers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good part, honestly. Also because uh, I think, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, we still don't currently know what are no, doppelgangers. We, we, don't. we don't actually so, like, have any lore about doppelgangers, yeah, like, whatsoever. So, uh, like, the, so the way I, the way I figured it... <laughs> oh yeah, you're right! Yeah! Joe was explaining... Yeah, yeah, this was a comment from Yuro in the Discord that's been lost to time, but no, Doppelgangers showed up because uh, he had a lot of issues handling all the different combinations of events that could occur based on uh, who is selected and what flags are set. So he solved one of them by just like, okay, yeah, if X, Y, and Z happens, instead of being a copy of the character, it's a Doppelganger. And then it's that just roll with it. Brilliant. I love, like, that is such a cool tech like actually i saw him tweet something uh, a while ago being like uh i can't make this mirror reflect properly could someone come up with a lore reason for yeah this? and it's like <laughs> oh yeah, yeah dude fucking do it but, oh um, yeah and he's the first i just remember the first time i discovered the doppelgangers i met olivia in the bookshop then i went and recruited her at the church and then like it was like right at the end of like a three-hour stream we came back to the bookshop and she was there and everyone was like, oh, game's bugged, game's bugged, you know? Mm, and I was like, like that's nope. so fucking weird. Nope. And then we talked to her, and they accounted for it. Yeah. I was blown away. It was so good. Yeah, it is great. What what endings have you gotten in Termina so far? Fuck, what, what ending? I think you got the ending A. You killed the machine god, right? Yes, yeah, that was ah. it. Those fights were... How did, you, how did you go on the gauntlet at the end in the white bunker? Um, basically just as voiding as much conflict as possible, but I had, like, I had three characters and all of them had agility over 25, so I was able to basically just smother any enemy with offense. Yeah. The, uh, what's his name again? Platoon is, is probably my favorite enemy in the game, uh, because it's just so The bullshit. tank? <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah, tank. Yeah, the spank tank, as in the game files. <laughs> yeah, it's, the original name was spank tank. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that was a moment. All right. Is that thing like, um, is that thing like, I've seen all the screenshots of that just out in the street or at least in in the background. Oh, yeah, that's uh, do you want to know what's that? Please. Okay, it's a, it's a Mazo mode exclusive enemy. I think I got to play Mazo mode. It's you have to. <laughs> I can coach you if you need to, by the way. Um, I, I will probably do. I, I'll probably go in fresh once, but at some point yeah. I would like to do a, like a coach stream. That could be cool. Yeah, so of course. when the update fresh, comes out, go slow. Um, when, when the update comes out, Miro's going to add terror and starvation mode, and he said that Perfect. any any difficulty adjustments he makes to terror and starvation will also be applied to Maso mode. So Maso mode is going to get a lot harder when <laughs> when the update comes out. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't and it's already wait for a nightmare. Terror and starvation mode. Mm, it's not really a nightmare mm. if you play without limitations. Uh, we don't even with limitations. Yeah, it's pretty there, but it, but I remember you struggled now, so yeah, it it, it I, is difficult. I had difficult. I had like two hundred hours in the game when I started Maso mode, right? And I struggled more playing Maso mode than I did the very first time I played Termina. You you know uh, I have a com I, I think I already said this during those streams, but uh, my first Maso mode run was the Olivia Maso mode no wheelchair, so like, uh, and I was able to do it. So that I think that proves uh, that Maso mode is not that difficult uh, once you are able to I put mean, your mindset into it. It's like saying, oh, you know. What I would say, can... what I would say though, Frappolo, is you calling Maso mode not difficult is a little different than maybe anyone else on the planet calling it not difficult, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, I it's, mean, no, mm. let's also say that uh, I know less uh, about Termina than I know about Fear and Hunger 1. I have like uh, over 1,100 hours in Fear and Hunger 1. I have uh, a little bit over 200 in Termina. And uh, 200 I after... feel like, I, I know it doesn't sound like it, I think you just proved my point. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy when you've got 200 hours. It's easy, don't worry about it. But it's like it's like saying that well, yeah, Fear and Hunger One is easy because you can you can get you know Dars ending S in like a minute, so that means it's an easy game, right? 
or ending E in 30 seconds. Yeah, ending E in 30 <laughs> seconds. Did you get the... Um, Is that the new you? world record for ending E like 12 seconds now? Like 12.57? Yeah. What? Uh, um, yeah, you get an empty scroll from like the first thing you search and then immediately face up into the oh, wall. Oh, yeah. Of the I, got yeah, to, yeah, I, got yeah. To, I got a temporary world record for ending I might get it. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, but I completely forgot to say, you see, I started the speedrun.com for a hunger terminal. Oh, thing. that's so, so cool. Thankfully, we have, yeah, we have, we have a community that's speedrun terminal. Hey. All of us oh, man, I, would, I would love to do like a I would love to do like a summon salt style video on fear and hunger oh. speed. Oh, oh it, it would be I, insane. I There's literally a category that was added because Bones broke the game so much. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I found awesome. out that the the way it, basically, you know, do you have you gotten any of the ending s endings? No, no. he didn't. He didn't. You have oh, them. Okay. so much fun. Oh, they are so, so much fun. One of the S endings only checks if the Ars is in the party and you've met the conditions for her ending. And then it'll give you the S ending of whoever you picked. And there's a way to get oh, the Ars in the party oh. in hard mode, which means you yeah. can just get do her route for any character and wrong warp into anyone's ending. And the her route is one of the easiest endings. So you can basically <laughs> do the hardest endings uh, doing literally nothing. Yeah, that's why I stole... Okay three world records in uh like an hour <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so to get the s endings you've got to play on hard mode which means you can't recruit any controllable characters so you can't recruit uh mm -hmm. recruit like the girl or the other people um and you can't save there's no saving whatsoever like no books no beds um and everything's just 10 times harder so you've got to do the the endings in one, in a single sitting yeah, and... my chat is still at me to do the hard mode endings, and I know Frappolo, we were, we were saying we we're going to do at least one. Yeah, for oh, sure. You should, you should get me you on want. there. I can walk you through uh, all four of them in under an hour. No, <laughs> don't, don't make him use bleaches. Come on. Uh... <laughs> I am, it, there is no reason to fear and hunger one with honor with how often the freaking S endings will glitch out and soft lock you. Wait, weren't you the one that said, uh, uh, I died to the guard and so I decided to take my revenge and now you're saying you want to use glitches? Yes, because the glitches are part of the revenge. If the game's <laughs> gonna fight dirty, I get to fight dirty back. That uh, is kind of his mission, sta mission statement, in fairness. That is true. Yeah. Nah. My goal isn't to honorably defeat this game that made me look bad. My goal is to torture this game and dissect it live through YouTube videos until everyone knows every single aspect of it and how to completely humiliate it. That's true. It is, it is ridiculously easy to get those S endings when you know what you're doing. Heck, if you know what you're doing, you can get S endings on uh, easy mode. I don't know. I spoke to Connor after your stream with him, Frappolo, and yeah. he was like, "Fuck that game, dude." <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there is a secret part that I I never told the uh, dog that there are some things that I intentionally skipped in our uh, in our route just because I wanted to show him some particular mechanics of bosses, like uh, the uh, cutting off the arms of the nameless. But uh, I'm not gonna spoil uh, anything for your uh, next run. But like, uh, I, I I intentionally skipped doing uh, certain easy stuff that would have made the uh, out of fights uh, completely brain dead. <laughs> Yeah, Frappolo wanted him to face the game with courage and honor and give it a fair fight and all that jazz. And, like, screw that. The game doesn't deserve that. It deserves to be beaten <laughs> with sticks. <laughs> so, as you've, as you've played the games more after your video, has your opinion changed much from, from them? Um, I think once, once Fear and Hunger 1 really got its, like, its claws into me, my 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 feelings haven't changed that much like i think um there's a certain air of mystique to those games that is not there because i think by virtue of beating them it's a little bit of like what jones is saying you unravel those games right mm. and i kind of miss that feeling a little bit but also like seeing the gold bros in fear and hunger 2 just makes me so excited <laughs> it's it's that, funny I, I can't wait to see what else he adds to that game it's it's gonna be insane um 15 yeah. new enemies confirmed minimum coming. We've only Holy seen like two of them. Shit. Yeah. Wow. Um, but it, it's awesome. funny. Oh, yeah. Like the clown Manaba. Yeah, that's right. What's his name? Johan. And Miro keeps bullying Johan. 
he keeps saying he's lame, and I don't think that's fair. Johan looks cool. Um, Johan. Johan looks like a clown. Trigger. What are you talking about? Yeah, he's that, cool. That Ligma, Johan. Um, but yeah, he looks Johan. like a manaba that needs to go on Weight Watchers. <laughs> Leave him alone. Johan's cool. Um, yeah, like talking about how unraveling that mystery. That's a, that's. It's funny because that's a big part of the actual like game as well. Like when you. Like, you know, when you get deeper and deeper, like the character starts thinking stuff like, you know, maybe I've, maybe I've gone too deep. I shouldn't have come here. And then there's one ending. Um, what, what ending is it? It's ending B, um, where you go into the, into the gauntlet. Um, yeah, it's ending B. And at, I'm not sure if, have, have you done all the, all the endings other than the S endings? Yes, I have. Um, yeah. So at, at the end, after you fight Grogoroth, you're just thinking like, you know, I, I shouldn't have done this. It's, it's you know, once you stepped into the darkness, it was too late, but you shouldn't have come here in the first place. Like, you shouldn't have pushed yourself so hard to try and know things you shouldn't know. And I think it's, it's really cool. I mean, this. literally, yeah. Yeah. in the moment which we enter inside of the dungeon, there is a message which says, uh, you think it uh, it might be a, be a mistake to enter into the dungeon. Uh, so, like, if you don't realize that by the point you're in the gauntlet, there was something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and I think they also, it also has a moment really like that, um, where um, you sit in the chair and it says something very similar. Ooh, yeah, yeah. It says it was your uh, your um, your decision to come here. No one forced you. You could have just slept that morning or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> that chair scene is so good. <laughs> Oh, good. I love that part. Also, because uh, in, in, my, in my own head canon, that part is also talking about the player. You decided to play the game to inflict yourself with pain to try to understand uh, its mechanics and try to overcome the challenges. Like, uh, it's a, a, it's a sort of my head canon in this case. But uh, I really like it also because um, I, I, um, I found a lot of moments in which there are comparisons between uh, the player that is playing the game and what is happening to the character. But uh, maybe this was just uh, not intentional. I mean, I think, like, intentional or not, I think that's a really valid read of that whole thing. Like, to me, I absolutely took it as that. Because um, I think, like, it is just... Mm. Yeah, that is just what the experience of this game is. Yeah. All right, so uh, do we have any last questions before we before we wrap up or any questions for us? Excellent. I mean, I had one thing that I wanted no. to get to, but it's going to be it's gonna be a little bit long. We, we can try and go through it quick if you want. All right. So I think I mentioned towards the start of this podcast that I described Fear and Hunger as a puzzle game mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. each fight has a specific solution. And I remember in your video, you called it an immersive sim when describing how <gasps> it worked. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's a really good way to think about it. There's a lot of stuff that interacts in a way that's similar to an immersive sim, but it's only halfway to an immersive sim. And you can prove that mathematically. <laughs> Go for it. See, there's two things that have defined the immersive sim since the genre was invented. The ability to break down doors and stack crates to climb over stuff. <laughs> and uh, Fear and Hunger only lets you break down doors, so it's only half of an immersive sim. <laughs> well, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I mean, well, that's an interesting analysis, honestly. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming on iPatch Wolf. Um, for the one person listening to this who doesn't know where to find you, where can we where can we find you? I mean, you can you can Google Super iPatch Wolf and find me wherever. Um, I I stream Fridays at twitch.tv forward slash Super iPatch Wolf, and you can also find if you want to see the many many disastrous decisions I made in Fear and Hunger. I have Let's Plays of all that up on the channel regular eye patch wolf awesome and all those links will be in the description thank you so much for coming on eye patch wolf this is oh great... guys this was this was such a pleasure seriously like this was so much fun and i really appreciate you having me oh thanks yeah, had a great oh. time yeah no, thank you very much good 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 bunch of people <laughs> what right, we'll no, i mean what are you for... talking about <laughs> had to get you back on for fear <laughs> hunger three in four years. <laughs> Absolutely. No 2027, guys. We're going to do it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Best luck, guys. Thank you.